Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mount Olive family. Good morning, everybody joining us this morning for our morning devotion. I'm so happy to be with you, and I'm excited to dig into the Word of God with you and to continue to just reflect on it, hear it, walk through it with you, and to just marvel and be amazed at everything that Jesus Christ has done for us and his personal love letter to us through God's word. So good morning, everybody joining us. She was a little off screen right now, but Millie is joining me and she's fell, she's falling asleep on my lap. So she will be with us in presence for the devotion, but that's a-okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody joining in. Good morning, everybody logging on. It's so awesome to be with you. It's so awesome to just be with you this morning in this beautiful, it's going to be warm today. I mean, warm by Wisconsin standards. It's supposed to get up to 45 is the last that I saw. So who knows? Maybe uh, maybe throughout the day the, the hoodie will come off. Maybe the hoodie's already off for some of you guys. So that's all right. That's a good sign that spring is on its way. But like we said, we live in Wisconsin. Who knows? So good morning, everybody. Good morning, Harley. Good morning, everybody joining us for our devotion. My question for you this morning is, if you, if you take naps, how long do you generally try to take your naps for? So if at any point in the day, you, or maybe just at different periods or stages of your lives, what's your favorite time or what's your favorite length of time to take a nap? Do you take 20 minute power naps? Do you block out an hour or two to take a nap? What What is your favorite time frame or length of time that you use to take naps? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, everybody joining us. What is your favorite time to take naps? Or how, how if you take naps, how long do you take them for? If I take naps, generally for me, they're in like that 30 to 45 minute range, if I'm lucky, <laughs> if I'm lucky. If these, if this dog and the one that's over there chewing on something, if they let me, I generally try to take about 30 to 45 minute naps, but I don't take them every day. I kind of take them, generally I'll take them after Sunday worship maybe once or twice throughout the week, but it depends. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, Diane. So in the comments, let me know, let everybody else know, how long do you take naps when you take them? What, what length of time do you generally like to take them? And we are gonna be in the Gospel of Matthew. We are gonna finish chapter 11. So we, I've got my ESV Bible with me right here. If you've got your Bibles with you, go ahead and get them out. And we are going to look at Matthew 11. We're going to take it through from verse 25 through the end of the chapter. So here we go. Starting at verse 25. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So right here, we get a pretty good uh, glimpse of Jesus and everything that he is talking about with his disciples. And one thing I think that's pretty kind of interesting, right, is that Jesus in the first half of this, verses 25 through 27, Jesus looks at this, or Jesus proclaims to his disciples that, uh, no one knows the Father except the Son, and no one knows the Son except the Father and those who the Son says so, right? So even though 
we know that Jesus Christ now, you know, 2,000 years later is the Son of God, that he is God in the flesh, came, came down into this world, lived the perfect life. At this point in Jesus' ministry, he's calling his disciples, or he's called his disciples, and his disciples know who he is. His disciples know that he is a great teacher and that he is the Son of God, the Christ. There's people in the world like the Pharisees, and there's people who reject him and the people who don't like him that don't really understand that he is the Son of God. And that's for a purpose. That's for a purpose because frequently and especially at this point in Jesus's ministry he says things or he alludes to things like my time has not yet come so even though he's choosing the disciples to know who he is and to teach them and to grow them to the rest of the world to the bigger audience the rest of the world really doesn't have an idea of who Jesus is and but this is all according to God's plan you see because <clears throat> if everybody knew who Jesus was if everybody at this point knew Jesus as the Son of God, our Lord and Savior, then God's plan for salvation would have looked a lot different. But we know that God's plan for salvation, not just for the disciples, but for the entire world, was for Jesus Christ to go to a cross, for Jesus Christ to be beaten, to go to trial and be condemned to death, to be condemned to a death by crucifixion, so that way, he, by shedding his blood, by being that final perfect sacrifice, would pay for and redeem the sins of the entire world. And see, we all know that eventually on that third day, that very first Easter morning when Jesus rose from the dead, that is his statement to the world. That is his statement to that wider audience that says, no, I really am the son of God. I am God in the flesh because only God could raise the dead. And so Jesus raising himself from the dead, not only does it give comfort to his disciples and reinvigorate his disciples, but it also proclaims him as Lord, as God to the broader audience, to the bigger audience, to the entire world. And then we see here at the very uh, second half of this verses 28 through 30, even though he's got a specific audience, the disciples who he's revealed this knowledge to, his invitation is for everybody. His invitation is not just for the disciples, but it's for you, me, it's for the entire world. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, everybody who's got hurts, anxieties, is tired, is exhausted, is grieving, is depressed in any capacity, and Jesus says he gives us rest. Take my yoke. So the yoke, uh, when I first read this, when I was a little kid, my first thought was like an egg yoke. And my pastor lovingly educated me and said, no, no, a yoke is something that people would, uh, people would strap to themselves or that you would strap to an ox to carry a cart or to carry a large number of uh, goods or to carry a cart full of something. But a yoke, so when Jesus is saying here is my work, my yoke is easy and his burden is light. And you see, we burden ourselves down with the weight of the world, with uh, bills that have to get paid. Maybe your burdens are coming uh, from COVID-19, you know, and all the uncertainties that that brings. Or maybe your burdens are something more internal. But Jesus says, you know, I want to take, I'm going to take all the things that are weighing you down. I'm going to take your heaviness, your burdens, the sins and the imperfections of your life, and I'm going to take that for myself. And Jesus instead says, here, take my yoke. You take my burdens. And because he's God, because he's perfect, and because his love for us is perfect and unending and never runs out, that's the, bur the burden that you and I have, that Christians have. You see, regardless of whatever happens in this world, we know that Jesus gives us a perfect final rest, a rest for our souls. Not just a rest that we get from a good nap, from a 20-minute or an hour-long nap or whatever, whatever kind of physical rest we experience, but this is a complete, satisfactory, total rest. And it's a rest from everything in the world. It's a rest from everything that's going on in our lives. And that rest 
and that peace only comes from Jesus. So that's where we're going to stop today, church, and I invite you to pray with me. Uh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you give us a new yoke. Lord, with everything in this world that burdens us, that weighs us down, that uh, takes our eyes and our hearts off of you, Lord, we just give you thanks that you give us a new, new rest, a rest that only you can give and a rest that only comes from you and a rest that you give us so freely and lovingly from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I just pray that this morning and uh, throughout the rest of our lives that you continue to keep us mindful of you and your work and what you have done for us, especially in the season of Lent, as we fix our eyes and our hearts to Jesus, as we look at everything through the power of the empty cross and the empty tomb, that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and that his yoke for us is easy and his burden is light because he accomplished for us that perfect final rest, that no matter what happens in this world, no matter what happens when we go home to be with you, that you have accomplished in one paradise for us through the blood and death and resurrection of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for this. And Lord, it's in this, it's this prayer and everything that we have in our hearts that we uplift and cast on you because we know you hear us, sustain us, and most of all, that you love us. And it's in your holy name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hit that share button. We want to keep bringing the word of God to as many people as we can through the means of this devotion and our Facebook live streams. And don't forget to, if you are comfortable, join us for worship this weekend. And if you're not, that's a-okay. We also want to invite you to join us virtually or online as we will be streaming our service this weekend at nine o'clock. We just want to wish you a very blessed weekend. Stay safe, stay warm. I know that's easier said I know that's easier than it has been the past couple of weeks, but we want to just wish you a very great and blessed weekend, and we will see you Sunday morning for worship. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.